welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar we continue to study the at sandhi or the vowel sandhi we said that the ach sandhi is classified under two broad categories the first one being ekasthanika ekadesha meaning thereby that one substitute ek adesha coming in place of one sthani one substituent one substituent one substitute and the other category would be dvisthanika ekadesha one substitute in place of two substituents currently we are studying the instances of ekasthanika ekadesha and the first instance namely the yan sandhi is what we are concentrated on and what we have been studying for a few lectures now in detail this ekasthanika ekadesha can be diagrammatically represented like this if you have a in close proximity with b which means that you have a plus b as an input b is the right hand side environment and they are in the samhita mode and so a gets substituted by c a plus b is the input and c plus b is the output a is the substituent c is the substitute a is the sthani c is the adesha this type of ach sandhi is stated in the sutras 6172 onwards up to 6183 and we are studying yan sandhi which is the first instance of this particular type of sandhi we have studied yan sandhi in detail now first we studied the sutra eko yanachi 6177 which states the yan sandhi we then looked at its meaning we then introduced the uddeshya vidhaya bhava and we also studied the sutra anudit savarnasya cha pratyaya then we looked at the criterion which allows paninian grammar to select a particular substitute in place of the substituents after that we studied individual examples of all vowels included in the pratyahara ik in different different environments we have also studied how yan sandhi becomes an input to the swara operations and we studied in the previous lecture two important sutras in this regard udatta yano hal purvat 61174 and udatta swarita yoho yanah swarito nudattasya 824 now in this lecture we shall study some more important aspects related to yan sandhi we will take a look at the discussion that goes on with reference to this yan sandhi what we will deal with in this lecture primarily is sthani vad bhav what are the basics of sthani vad bhav sandhi as we have already studied is an adesha or a substitute which
comes in place of a substituent. So we have two steps. The first step consists of a substituent and an environment. The second step consists of the substitute plus the environment in the current scenario. Now this substitute can be like a substituent. That is what will ensure the continuity of the derivation process as well. What we mean is that the substitute can inherit some properties of the substituent. In Sanskrit it is said Adeshaha Sthanivat Bhavati. Adesha inherits some properties of the substituent. Adeshaha Sthanivat Bhavati. This is what is Thanivad Bhava in basics. If we apply the technique of Thanivad Bhava in the local situation that is to 6177, we note that Yan is the Sandhi, which means that Yan is the Adesha, and this Adesha has taken place in place of ik. So ik is the sthani, yan is the adesha and ik is the sthani. So by applying the technique of sthani vad bhava, we can say that yan can inherit some properties of ik. Yan can inherit some properties of ik. Let us in brief study the sutra in the text of Ashtadhyayi which teaches Sthanivad Bhava and the sutra is Sthanivad Adeshah Analvidhau 1156. What this sutra says is that the substitute acts like the substituent except in operations which are based on the individual sound or al, that is a phoneme. What it means is that the substitute inherits the properties of the substituent except the ones which are phonological. I repeat, the substitute inherits the properties of the substituent except the ones which are phonological. The idea of Sthanivad Bhava is also explained in the Paninian grammatical tradition by a common example which says Guruvat Guruputre Vartitavyam which we have converted into a modern sentence kula guru vat upakula gurau vartitavyam. So because the vice chancellor of a university has to go out of campus for some particular reason, the pro vice chancellor, the second in command should be treated like the vice chancellor, which means that the second in command will inherit the properties of the vice chancellor. Of course, the acting vice chancellor cannot sign like a vice chancellor. So there are some properties which cannot be inherited, but there are some which are inherited. Something similar is happening in case of Thanivad Bhava as well. The phonological properties cannot be inherited, but the other properties can be 
inherited. The technique of Sthanivad Bhaval is so popular within the Paninian grammatical tradition that Kalidasa, a very famous poet of Sanskrit, used Sthanivad Bhaval as a standard of comparison in one of his Mahakavyas. So when he described that Rama, after having slain Vali, made Sugriva ascend the throne, Kalidasa describes this particular situation in a peculiar manner by saying that just as a grammarian would substitute a verbal root by some other element in a given environment, in the same manner Rama substituted Sugriva in place of Vali on the kingdom of Kishkindha, on the throne of Kishkindha. This is the popularity of the technique of Sthanivad Bhava. Now, let us see how the Sthanivad Bhava is applied to the Yand Sandhi and the Sutra Eko Yanachi. So we have already noted that Ik is the Sthani and Yan is the Adesha. And Yan can inherit some properties of Ik. So here we have a compound Sudhi plus Upasya. And because this is a compound that the Samhita is obligatory, so the Sandhi is obligatory. So this long E and this U, Sudhi, E and U Upasya, these two vowels come in Samhita mode in close proximity and so then 6177 applies and the output generated is Y in place of E. So we have Sudhya and Upasya which is Sudhya Upasya. Now the properties that this Y which is a substitute can inherit from E are like this ik is part of the purvapada. So this e is part of a purv of the purvapada. Similarly, the substitute y inherits this property and becomes a part of the purvapada. So because of that, this y comes at the end of the pada, because of which certain operations happen, which we shall discuss later on in this particular lecture. So this year is part of the Purvapada. Why? Because its substituent E is part of the Purvapada. This property can be inherited by applying the technique of Sthanivad Bhava. Now what is Anal Vidhav? So Anal Vidhav says that it is not possible to term yan as ik, this is not possible. It is not possible to term y as e. E is a vowel and y is a consonant. So the property of being a vowel cannot be inherited by y, which is a consonant. This is a direct conflict and that is not allowed. Now property of being a vowel is a property which is based on the individual property of the individual sound. It is an alvidhi and hence Sthani Vadbhava does not apply. That is the overall impact of anal vidhav. So Sthani Vadbhava does not apply in case of an alvidhi. Except alvidhi, Sthani Vadbhava can apply. Just as E is part of the Purvapada, Y also is part of the Purvapada. So if Sthanivad Bhava is accepted or not accepted, which function is going to get affected? Let us study that now. So here we have Sudhi Upasya once again as an input and Sudhya Upasya as an output. Now in this output, we have following sequence of sounds written over here, C, C stands for consonant, V stands for a vowel. So C 
V, C and C. S is a consonant, U is a vowel, Dh is a consonant and Y is a consonant. In this sequence, U is the left hand side environment and Y is the right hand side environment and in this environment, Dh can get optionally duplicated by 8447. So, this Dh becomes the scope of application of 8447, where U acting as the left hand side environment and Y acting as the right hand side environment fulfill the conditions for the application of 8447. And then we have Dh being reduplicated optionally. This is the function which can be affected by the Sthanivad Bhava. Let us therefore, in order to understand clearly, study the Sutra Anachicha in brief. The meaning of Anachicha is the following, Achak Parasya Yaro Dve Vastaha Natvachi. I repeat, Achak Parasya Yaro Dve Vastaha Natvachi. What it means is, the sound included in the Pratyahara Yar is optionally reduplicated when it comes immediately after a vowel and when it is not immediately followed by a vowel. So, for example, when you have Ach followed by Yar followed by non Ach, what it means is that this is the condition for 8447 to apply and reduplicate Yar. What do we mean by non ach is made clear in these two bullets. So, if you have ach followed by yar and followed by hal, hal is a non ach. So, in this case, yar will get reduplicated as a result of the application of 8447. Similarly, if you have a situation like ach followed by yar, that is all, nothing follows. When nothing follows, it means that ach does not follow. So, even in this case, this year can get reduplicated by 8447. Now, in both the cases, the output we get is the following. So, if you have ach followed by year followed by hal, if this is the input, the output would be ach followed by year followed by year plus hal. This is the reduplication of year in this environment. Or if you have ach followed by year as the input, the output would be ach followed by year followed by year. Once again, the reduplication of year. Now, in the case that we are studying right now, where sudhya is the purvapada, we have sa, then U, which is an ach, then we have dh, which is a yar, and then we have y, which is a hal, which means that this bracket is exactly replicating this particular sequence ach, yar, hal. This previous s does not matter in this case. So, u, dh, y, they are this ach, yar, and hal. And so, 8447 would apply here and generate the output optionally as sa u dh dh ya. Sa u dh dh ya. So, dh gets optionally reduplicated. But if sthanivad bhava is applied and yan is considered as ek, so you have sa u dh ya, and now this ya is a hal. But if you apply Sthanivad Bhava and consider this Y as ik, which is a vowel, so Y will be considered as E, that means Y will be considered a vowel. And so now, Ach followed by Yar followed by Hal, this will not get fulfilled. And so, the reduplication of Yar, in this case of Dh, cannot be done because this year now 
is considered as a vowel. So, ach plus yer plus hal, this situation, this condition, this environment remains un unfulfilled. Now, you have ach followed by yer followed by ach. How does ach come here? Because of sthanivad bhava. So, if sthanivad bhava is applied, then the reduplication is negatively affected. Now comes the term analvidhav once again and plays a crucial role and plays a crucial role in this situation. Considering yan as a and then basing the reduplication operation on the phonological property of an individual sound is an alvidhi. And the sthanivad bhava is negated with reference to the alvidhi by the sutra sthanivad adesho analvidhau. So, sthanivad bhava is negated with reference to any alvidhi. And hence now yan cannot be considered as ik. And the result is the fulfillment of the environment of anachicha. So we have ach immediately followed by yar, immediately followed by hal. So we have sa, u, dha, ya. This is the ach, this is the yar. This is the hal. There was a danger that this year be considered as e, like its substituent, that means a vowel, but now anal vidhav negates it. So, this year will not be considered a vowel, this will be considered what it is, namely a consonant, and so now we will have the being reduplicated, and the output would be sa u dha dha year the reduplicated form optionally and so that is suddhya upasya or suddhya upasya. This will be the result because of the negation of the sthanivad bhava. And the final output would be suddhya upasya. This would be the intermediary stage that is derived. Now jhalam jash jhashi 8453 applies over here and up substitutes the in place of the first the. So now we have su, the, the, y and upasya and so we get these two forms su, the, the, y upasya, su, dhu, upasya or the optional non reduplication. So you have su, the, u, upasya, su, dhu, upasya. These are the two forms that are finally generated. And in the derivation of these two forms, the sthanivad bhava plays a very crucial role. But the story does not end here. There are two more additional sutras which we will not go into the details of right now, but we will just mention them over here. And they are Achak Parasmin Purva Vidhau 1157. So, this makes the matters complicated and this reinforces the Sthanivad Bhava and says that Yan is considered as Ik and the fulfillment of the environment of Anachicha does not happen. And so, the reduplication does not happen. This is what is stated by Achak Parasmin Purva Vidhau, a very complicated sutra, which reinforces the Sthanivad Bhava in place of a vowel. But the next sutra in line 1158, which reads, Na padanta dvirvachana vare yalopas vara savarna nuswar dirgha jashchar vidhishu. This sutra negates the sthanivad bhava that was reinforced by achak parasmin purva vidhau. 
and now yan is not considered as ik and the fulfillment of the environment of anachicha does happen and so the reduplication does happen optionally so sthanivad adeshah brings in the sthanivad bhava analvidhav negates the sthanivad bhava in the present case acha parasmin purva vidhav reinforces the the sthanivad bhava and na padant finally negates it that is that the sthanivad bhava stands cancelled as far as sudhyupasya is concerned and yan is therefore not considered as ek so anachicha can apply and the reduplication can have optional application after a long discussion about sthanivad bhava and the sutras therein i would like to make a brief comment about this entire process this entire discussion and this comment is based in the tradition which says kechit bhrashtah sudhyupasya prayoge this statement describes the drop of students due, due to the complexity of the topic of sthanivad bhava so in the text of vyakarana siddhanta kaumudi the most important chapters which begins as the third chapter namely ach sandhi consists of this example of sadhyavasya and then there is a long discussion on the sthanivad bhava right at the beginning and some students who were very much eager to learn vyakarana after having seen such complicated matters they dropped out so the effect of this discussion was the dropping of the students and that is what is captured in this particular line kechit bhrashtah sudhyapasya prayoge and the discussion on the sthanivad bhav and of course this is one of the lines of the verse and then it also enumerates what are the other occasions in the vyakarana shastra where the students further get dropped due to the complexity of the matter now closing this discussion we would like to point out a gap in the discussion of the yan sandhi as found in the core text of paninian grammar namely the ashtadhyayi and this gap occurs because of the application of 8223 8223 is sanyogantasya lopaha what it means is that the final consonant of a conjunct consonant call sanyoga in paninian grammatical tradition at the end of a pada is deleted so in case of sudhi and upasya this is a compound therefore both these words they are the padas so this e comes at the end of a pada and now we apply 6177 eco yanachi and derive the output in the form of sudhya upasya now this year comes at the end of a purva pada and this is also the second member of the sanyoga dh and y and so now 8223 applies over here and this year will be deleted so year comes at the end of a pada and is also the final element of a conjunct consonant and hence needs to be deleted i mean just as this year is deleted similarly the other yans coming at the end of the pada in this particular situation should also be deleted what is the answer there is no explicit answer given by panini himself the solution is provided by the vartika kar who says yana pratishedho vachcha 
the deletion of yan at the end of a pada coming at the end of a kanjang consonant is prohibited. That is the statement that was made. This statement prohibits the deletion of ya in sudhya and upasya, and so we get the forms su the dhu pasya or su dhu pasya. So this ya at the end of the purva pada is not deleted. So you have sudhya pasya or sudhya pasya. This is how the later Paninian grammatical tradition removes this particular gap by providing this particular solution in the form of a statement of a vartika. To summarize this entire discussion on 6177, we say that we studied the first instance of one substitute, one substituent of vowel sandhi in detail, quite a lot of detail. We studied 6177 eco yadachi and also its expanded meanings. We also studied its examples. We also studied how it becomes an input to the accent rules. Then we discussed the sthanivad bhava and eco yanaji. We also discussed the gap that is filled in by the later tradition of the Paninian grammar. This is in a nutshell the conclusion of the discussion on eco yanaji, the first instance. Now hereafter we would start discussing the second instance of this one substitute, one substituent type of vowel sandhi and that is a yava yava sandhi stated by the sutra echo yava yavaha. This we shall begin from the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.